Hi, DocPlexus community. I'm Dr. Malay Patel from Ahmedabad, and I have here with me my friend Swat Duganchi from Ankara in Turkey. And today we're going to answer or try to remove some cobwebs around what people have been thinking about the venous disease and venous treatments. And Swat, hi. You have been on the forefront of treating deep venous insufficiency as I would as I say it but I'm sure you have the proper terms of that so can you just tell us about the deep venous system that you have usually tried to make better for the patient can you tell us about that Suat? Of course and uh, thank you for the introduction uh, deep venous pathologies you know that uh, is usually less understood and less true. treated when you, when you compare it with the superficial system. That's true. But the deep venous pathology is a combination also of whole the venous system. So all the, um, let's say, blood through the heart mainly passes through the deep system. So it has a great effect or great impact on whole venous uh, circulation. That's why the disease affecting the deep system has great uh, results on the human, especially venous health. And the major, we have, you know, two major pathologies related with the deep system. One is uh, deep venous obstructive disease, and the other is the deep venous insufficiencies. The That's so true. The obstructive disease can be either thrombotic or non-thrombotic, and also the uh, insufficiencies can be related to a secondary due to thrombosis and also can be a primary insufficiency. So the philosophy of treating those different pathologies is also different than due to, uh, regarding the pathology which is causing the system. If it is an obstructive pathology, the main issue is just trying to remove the causing effect which, which is causing this obstruction. Very true. Yeah, and if it is an insufficiency, and it, it is different than from the superficial system because it is much more easier to solve a problem in the superficial system. But if it is related with the deep system, the indications uh, making a, for example, surgery is relatively very narrow than the superficial system. For the patients, for example, who are who are having unhealed ulcers for a very long time and if you correct the superficial system and then the perforating system and still if they have unhealing ulcers then we have some indications for surgery to make to or to correct the uh, insufficiencies in the superficial system. So would it be appropriate for me to say that as we have evolved in the treatment of venous disease, veins were the poor cousin of the arteries. And we, as I used to popularly say, that Cinderella has now come to the ball, and that was about a decade ago. And now that we are understanding more of the venous system, we are saying that the deep venous system, which was the poor cousin of the superficial system, is now going to go to the ball. Yeah, exactly. And the way you described it, that's very so appropriate, that you have two problems. You have a thrombosis-related problem, and it's sequelae, or you have a primary obstructive problem, which could be either due to some compression or something that's going on in which the blood flow cannot go back to the heart as it would through the main channels. And this is just so important. Now, Suat, would you probably in a broad sense agree that a lot of the diagnosis in the deep venous system is a system of exclusion. Is that a, a correct statement or would you like to modify my statement? Uh, what, what do you mean by exclusion? Exclusion of symptoms. Ah, okay. yes, so you course. exclude that this, the patient has come to you with a symptom, a complex uh, you know, s number of systems and you say, okay, 
this is you do not have this, you do not have that, but then now it you could be having a problem with your deep venous system. So, in a general sense, if I said that the diagnosis of the deep venous system or the problems related to the deep venous system is by way of exclusion, is yeah. that? Somehow we can think it like this. Okay. And also, you know that the uh, actually, I think we should uh, have a holistic approach to the venous That's system. That's very nice. Yes. Because no system is stands alone by itself. Correct. So that's why even, for example, when you think the whole venous system uh, in our body, for example, let's talk about the pelvic congestion. So it is related, you know, that we have four interconnected system. Starts from the ovaric vein or the renal vein, go to the iliacs, and then for the escape points, go, going to the lower leg part. So if you are trying to make a treatment you should look for all those interconnected system to find the pathology that causing the symptom. That's why uh, just uh, the focusing on one topic or one issue maybe uh, make you lose the main, uh, let's say, cause that, um, uh, let's say, originating you're, you're, this symptom. You are absolutely right. And this is where the role of the expert comes in. And so what I just recently, we had this conversation last evening and you told me that you will be the, in the very near future, will be the first professor of venous disease in the whole of Turkey. So isn't that something that everybody should start recognizing that you will now have a specialist who will actually be in an academic position for treating venous disease? Isn't that something that you yeah. think is the, the, is the future? Yeah. yeah, I think you are right. And you, you had a very good explanation like the Cinderella. So uh, Cinderella is come going to the ball. That's right. So, and the f field of phlebology is, I think, gaining uh, some attraction. That's true. So the glamour is going there. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's such an such a important thing to happen to bring recognition to this field of treating venous disease. And I think having said all this and discussed this, we would probably seeing in the next decade wonderful things happening. Yeah, Thank, you. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suwat. Thank you.